the Occupy Wall Street protesters would say, business needs more regulation. And it is natural to think that a regulation will protect us from greedy business types. And the politicians and bureaucrats who impose them sure believe they will. Rarely do they step back and look at the cumulative total of what the bureaucrats demand. And as of this week, we're up to 160,000 pages of rules. That's what it looks like. You want to start a business? You better read all that or pay someone to read all of it and to try to understand it or you could be in big trouble. And again, these are just the federal rules. States and towns have even more. How could anyone possibly read all that and understand it and follow these rules? I know I couldn't, but I assume these two successful CEOs can because they're not in jail. Brad Anderson ran Best Buy. And Stephen Zelnick is chairman of Marietta Materials. So, Stephen, did you read all these? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, if you can't summarize it in one or two pages, uh, you're probably not going to understand it anyway. Well, do you hire people who read them? But you have to obey them. Uh, you disobey one, you could be in trouble. You, you do hire people to understand them. Uh, I, don't, I don't know anyone who ever reads the intimate detail of all those regulations. It's far too complicated. Um, you grew Marietta Materials to a very big company from $450 million in revenue to $2.2 billion. Could you do that today with all these rules? We, we couldn't grow at the same pace. It would be impossible. A lot of the strategy that we employed was to open new quarry operations. Uh, I think we'd be lucky if we could open 25% of the ones we opened up, just trying to overcome uh, the environmental rules in particular. And. Could you have built Best Buy the way you did with today's rules? No, Best Buy was barely survived for its first 20 years, and it was on the edge of, and it was really just guts and... and if you had and to pay for lawyers if, to if, read if, that. There's no way. We couldn't begin to do it. Uh, and you are one of the few honest big business types who are willing to say these rules help you in some ways. He actually had an argument with one of our, our government affairs that came to me at Best Buy and said we should resist these rules. And I said, it depends. As an American, I want to resist those rules. As a Best Buy executive, I'm in favor of those rules. We acted against it, against the rules. But the, because the, they the, crush the little Because they crush, right. Somebody wanting to compete with us can't because we can afford to hire the guys that can read this stuff and keep us in compliance with the law. They can't. And the politicians don't get that. But one who finally did was George McGovern. Yeah, ironically. George, uh, George, when he left office as a, as a senator from South Dakota, went and opened a, 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 ho a hotel, right? a small little bed and breakfast hotel. And he, he, was he wrote, I wish during the years I was in public office, I had this firsthand experience about the difficulties business people face. Public policy does not consider whether we are choking off business opportunities. The growth of technology comes out of this country because of its economic freedom. If we crush that, we also crush our future. And most of these politicians have never run anything, so they don't experience what they impose on others. Tell, tell us how you made Marietta Materials so successful. Well, we focused on people. Uh, I, I have a firm belief that uh, what... Platitude, platitude, yeah, it's, come on. It's, it's platitude, but uh, I really have a firm belief if you get the right people together and energize them, motivate them, that they'll carry you forward to great success. I thought it was a clever idea. You found a new way to ship stuff. We had a novel strategy that we implemented. Uh, we you ship things by water and rail we, instead of truck. We began to, uh, we, we saw the coastal areas growing. There was no aggregate there. And we set up to cut transportation costs with a rail uh, water network that was integrated. And it was highly successful. But it took us a long time to do it. Uh, we had to be very patient. Uh, even the permitting environmental side of that was very difficult to overcome even for a large company. And you're now horrified by the EPA and its costs, but you were a big supporter of the EPA. I, I was a fan of the EPA. I lived in two areas where I got to experience red air and black snow. And this country clearly needed to be cleaned up. And I think the EPA did a great job of that. Mm -hmm. We're at a point now, and it's been that way for some years, where we're well past it. Uh, they keep layering on, layering on, layering on. Uh, it's become self-serving. It runs for its own special interest. And yeah, I, I would suggest to you that the primary taxing agency of the United States government is not the IRS, it's the EPA. There's so many rules and regulations. Uh, we talked about crushing the small business guy. There's no way the small business person can either understand or pay for these rules. 
it's imposed at too low a level. Big corporations can handle this, and it is competitive advantage for large corporations.